Yes, it's happening. I'm making a series of FNAF Blender tutorials. So now, let's get on with the video. Well, 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 look at the cat dragged in. Before we start, I'd like to mention that this video is sponsored by Opera GX. And so, it's sponsoring time, baby. Do you like simplicity, customizability, and gaming? Well, if I got the deal for you, bud. Indeed, Opera GX is a browser made for gamers, and it sticks out of the bunch in many, many, many ways. I've personally switched to it, and I'll be showing you why, to me, it's the top browser out there. One of the most important things is customizability, and Opera GX just allows you to do that. By going to the easy setup in the top right, you can change your theme, your wallpaper, and your colors, and it's super customizable, which is really fun to do. In this easy setup, because I also count it as customization, you can also put a nad blocker on, right in the settings, you can also block trackers, and one very important thing is that you can force dark pages, which means it will prevent this from happening. And if you like to keep up with releases, games, and news, GX Corner is the right place for you. Oh my god, is that FNAF security breach? <gasps> and now, let's dive into accessibility and simplicity. Opera GX makes it easy for you and implements Discord, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and many more. And you can easily access them with the sidebar on your left. Nice little touch as well is GX Player, where you can connect your Spotify, Deezer, YouTube Music, Apple Music account to your Opera GX and you can play music. But what about switching browsers? Well, bud, it has a synchronization setting. Indeed, all you gotta do is click on the little gear at the bottom of the sidebar, then you can search synchronization, import bookmarks and settings, and done. As for extensions, you can just go on the Google Chrome Web Store on Opera GX, find your extension, and it will say add to Opera, and done. To finish, and after that, I'll be done, an Opera GX is also available on mobile. It's great and it has an ad blocker too. You can also connect it to the desktop version with MyFlow. So thank you Opera GX for sponsoring this video. It's honestly an honor for me. Thank you. So yeah, I hope you guys will try it out. It is worth it. It's free. It's simple. And the link is in the description. And now, let's make a FNAF render. So before I start with the tutorial, I'd like to mention that I am nowhere near a pro. But I do know my way around Blender a tiny bit, so I think I can help people out. So Blender aficionados, please don't come to my house. Alright, so I do have screencast keys, which is an add-on, so I'm not going to talk about add-ons now, they're not necessary. But it's to help you follow, as you can see the controls I'm using. I will now explain a bit of the interface, at least what's for rendering, because it is overwhelming and I did struggle with it, so I'm going to explain a tiny bit. So the first thing we're going to look at is on the left. This section right here is for selection and movement, pretty much. So select will select items, meshes, armatures, lights, cameras, pretty much anything. Move will simply move things around. It's pretty self-explanatory. Using G will move it anywhere. And GX will move it only on the X axis, GY on the Y axis, and GZ only on the Z axis. For rotating, it's the same thing. Down below, you can just use R to rotate it generally, or you can use RX, RY, or RZ. And to finish off, scaling. The rest uh, isn't really that useful. I don't really use it for anything, so I'm just gonna show off scaling. Scale Y, so S, SY, SX, or SZ. If you ever bump it to edit mode, it's not really that useful, at least for rendering, so don't mind it, it's just to change the shape of an object or mesh. Alright, so now we're going to get into specifics. If you see me switching between two blend files, it's normal because one is for the render, and the second one is a basic blend file to show you certain things. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get a model in. You don't really have to do this, but it's to keep your blender organized, you can create a collection where your model is going to be stored and you can deactivate that collection, hide it, whatever. Alright, so you're gonna go to File, Append, 
find the location of your model, double click it, go to object, then click on one of the items, hit A, all items should be selected, and then you can go enter and your model is now in. All right, so now to move around in Blender, you have to use your scroll wheel. You gotta click on it and hold it. And then you can use that same scroll wheel to zoom in. You just scroll like you're on a website. Okay, this is a little tricky, but to freely move in Blender, you have to use what you call fly slash navigation. To correctly use it, go to edit, preferences, key map, name, stay on name up there, and search fly or navigation. I have it as Shift F, but you can pretty much put anything you want. To make sure it works correctly though, press N, a little section should pop up, go to View, and in View you need to uncheck Lock to 3D Cursor, because you're not going to be able to use it if it's locked at the 3D Cursor. Before I get into any kind of posing, I want to take care of the render settings, because they're really important. Alright, so anything about rendering is going to be on the bottom right of your screen. I'll start with the render properties, which is the little camera icon. You can start by doing sampling. I raise my samples to 100 and usually it's really fine for me. Then you can tick off viewport denoising. Ambient occlusion doesn't really work with EV, so I don't use it. Because yeah, I do use EV as my render engine and not cycles because cycles just takes too much time. We're gonna leave the balloon for later. Then the screen space reflections, they're optional, I guess. If you do want those reflections, click on Refraction and raise the Trace Precision a little bit. Then for higher quality shadows, raise the Cube Size to 1024. And then you can just check High Bit Depth. Almost forgot to mention, but if you want to have a transparent render, then go to Film and click Transparent. Then just go to the tab below the camera. It's the Output Properties. So this is more quality related. What's cool with Blender is that you do not need a 4K monitor to render 4K. So you can pretty much put any format and size you want, it will work. It will just be laggier and will take a longer time. So what I do to get extra crispy quality is that I put 200% on 1080p, so it's double 1080p. Below that, there's the general output. Make sure to stay PNG. Put the compression down to 0% because we want crisp quality here, baby. And the color depth to 16. Now that this is out of the way, we're going to check the camera. To add a camera, make sure you're in object mode. Go to add near select an object, camera. To go in your camera view, it should be numpad zero. And this is where the fly navigation thingy comes in handy because now you can just freely move the camera. Now on the top right, make sure you click on your camera, make sure you're in object mode and then you should see a green camera on the bottom right. There are certain things that I deem important in there. First, go to viewport display and you'll see passport 2, which means it will only show what the camera sees, so the rest is going to be in black. The focal length is pretty much SFM's field of view, which means less focal length will make it look very stretchy and like a GoPro, while more focal length will make it look very flat. And then, the depth of field. It's a little tricky. I mean, in this case, you only use it if you're rendering with a background, like in a map, because if you're rendering a transparent background, then it doesn't matter. So the main things with depth of field, when you turn it on, as you can see, Freddy is blurry now. Two things you gotta adjust. First, the focus distance. So to make it simple, it's where it won't be blurry. So by playing with the focus distance, you can see Freddy's becoming more clear. The f-stop, which is the amount of blur, aka SFM's aperture. So the more there is, the less blurry it is. The less f-stop there is, the more blurry it is. Just so you can see what I mean, I've put a cube behind Freddy and you can see the cube is completely blurry. So this is a good way to make a character stick out and of course give more depth to your scene. And now, let's get into posing. So posing is pretty easy. You click on the armature in object mode, then you switch to pose mode at the top and boom. Then by left clicking a bone, you can rotate it, you can move it. And then it's your job to make your own pose. I will give you a tip. For fingers, if you want to bend all of them in one way, well, first the model has to be nicely rigged, you can select all the fingers using C. At the top center, click on Individual Origins. If the rotation axis is weird, you can also try switching from local to global or from global to local. And now, let's speed this up. And now, let's get into lighting, baby. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of information here, so listen. 
This is solid mode. And this is material preview mode. For Eevee, it doesn't matter. Material preview or rendered preview, same thing. And you want to make sure when you want to light your stuff that you have scene lights on and scene world on. The thing is, is that you need to go to world right here. And you need to make sure that it's black because if it's gray, as you can see, that's going to happen. So you want to make sure it's black. And then you can just pop a light in. Just like the camera, go to object mode, add light and point. For beginners, I recommend sticking to point lights, area lights, and spotlights. And in case you were curious, this is what the difference between point, area, and spot is. Now drag a second viewport by going on the corner of the one you're using, hold click, and drag it. With this, you're able to see where you place your lights by going into the camera on one and placing your lights on the second one. So first of all, once again, make sure you're in object mode or this little thingy won't pop up. This is where you change the lights. So first of all, the power, which is the intensity, the colors, which I think you have about a shmillion to choose from, the radius, which will work just like SFM. It will smoothen the shadows out. So of course, less radius, sharper shadows, more radius, softer shadows. And then contact shadows, which give you a correct shading. It will affect the meshes. So for example, behind the eyes, there will be shadows. Between meshes, there will be shadows. And those are the basics. So now you can light up your character and I will see you at the rendering phase. I truly hope you guys like this video. It helps you learn Blender a little bit. And this also makes me try new types of videos. And if you want to see a part two, then make sure to smash that like button. And now, at the end, rendering. I said I would come back to it later, so here we go. Bloom, the most important things in there are threshold, radius, and intensity. And you also don't have to use bloom. I don't recommend using bloom on transparent renders because it just looks really weird. And you're done, buddy. Now you just want to render, right? Easy peasy. Just go to the top, near edit, click on render, render image, and you're done. At this point, you can just look at the render and see if there's anything you want to tweak. But if not, all you gotta do is image, save as, make sure you have the PNG settings correct, and you can save. I also forgot to mention a very important thing. How do I get models? Well, sometimes they release on Twitter, but what I did to get my main grasp on FNAF models was use DeviantArt. And on DeviantArt, there are things called collections, and people made collections of FNAF releases. All you gotta make sure of is that on the release, it says EV or 2.8, because 2.7, the previous Blender, doesn't work with EV. So I'll be putting three collections of models that I found on DeviantArt in the description, so make sure to check them out. And here's the final result! Thank you all so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you liked it, and if you want more, then please let me know. If you plan on making a render after this, then please tag me on Twitter. I'll like it. And once again, thank you Opera for sponsoring this video. Please go try it out. It's amazing. Link is in the description and in the comments. Hugo, out.